Welcome to Kentucky, y'all. Today we are exploring Bowling Green. It's a little city just south of our campground and Bowling Green means Corvette. So we are at the National Corvette Museum. The first Corvette was produced in 1953 in Michigan and um, then they were subsequently built in St. Louis until 1981 and that's when the production moved to Bowling Green, Kentucky. So all Corvettes are now still made here in Bowling Green and there's a GM assembly plant right across the street from here. So you were just with us in the Mammoth Cave tour and you saw how massive that cave system was. Well, it extends over hundreds of miles in this part of Kentucky. And in 2014, an event happened here at the Corvette Museum. There was a cave underneath part of the museum that no one knew about and it created a sinkhole. The, um, the floor of the museum in one part collapsed and eight Corvettes were sunk down into this sinkhole. It was a huge deal and there was some very special and unique cars that got damaged during that time. They've got a nice little exhibit here about what happened and here's a shot of the damaged cars that were pulled back out of the sinkhole. Then completely breaks. 31 seconds from start to finish. In total, eight vintage cars were ruined. Those cars were our babies and it's, it's upsetting to have a little thing Sorry, like this happen. The fire department estimates that the hole is 40 feet wide and about 30 feet deep. As for the cars lying nose first in the dirt, the estimates of loss are much higher, especially for the one million Corvette that came off the assembly line. These three cars did go down into the sinkhole, including the one millionth Corvette produ produced, but they were able to be restored because their damage was not very heavy unlike the other cars in the back. had a yummy lunch at the Mellow Mushroom Pizza Place. If you've ne never eaten at a Mellow Mushroom, it is excellent pizza. And now we're going to do a little walking tour of Bowling Green. This is not on my, my GPS, GPS My City app. So I just went online and found a little article about sites to see in Bowling Green. There's a, there's a little walking tour of some plaques on some historical buildings. So we'll just walk around there, sprinkling a little bit, but probably won't be long. done such a nice job with their little heritage walk tour here so you often see these signs on historical buildings in small towns and it tells the history of the building but Bowling Green has also had this little hearsay section and it tells little anecdotes about people who lived here families who lived in the building or people who have memories of being in the building as kids so that's a nice little touch that they've done here and this is just a, a small main square around uh, Fountain Park which is across the street
everybody. Welcome back to Kentucky. We are in Lexington, Kentucky today, and um, we had some bourbon tastings planned for this afternoon, but we forgot that our campground at Diamond Caverns is in Central Time and Lexington is in Eastern Standard Time. So we got our timing a little bit off, but luckily the first tour was able to push us back an hour. So while we're waiting, we are just walking around uh, historic Lexington and right around Transylvania University here is a historic district and uh, some interesting houses there. So we're gonna make our way over to the tasting. I do feel like if I can get at least one person to try bourbon or whiskey in a day, uh, it's been a pretty successful day. So even on my days off, I get one person to drink bourbon. The cat's name is Tips, <laughs> Tipsy. Yeah, Tipsy the cat, yeah. We like that. Here is the queen of the castle. Too, too much time in Lexington today because we're running between these tours but it just so happens that where we parked our truck is next to the house where Mary Todd Lincoln was born and she is the wife of President Abraham Lincoln. Now I saw when we were driving up here, um, it's about, we're about two hours north of the campground and here's the house where Mary was born uh, and I saw signs for Abraham Lincoln's birthplace and I did not know he was born in Kentucky. I always thought he was born in Illinois because of course that's the famous place where he grew up. So that's kind of interesting. So Mary was born in this house, but then shortly after they moved just about a block down the street to a larger house and she spent part of her childhood there. They, that house is open for tours, but it wasn't open today. So I just peeked through the window a little bit. We're also not going to have time to visit any of the famous horse parks here because of course Lexington is most famous for thoroughbred horse racing. Um, but we did stop by the thoroughbred park down here in downtown Lexington just to get a feel for, for the racing and read some of the plaques here. is of the horse named Lexington which was he was named after the city and he was the first big American champion racehorse in the 1860s and 70s so he was actually racing and siring horses during the Civil War he um, was a champion racehorse all during that time and sired several dozen champion racehorses as well so he's he's real famous here in Lexington This has got three grains in it for rum, simply sugar. That's sugar water. Oh, that's left over. So, so that's what the cows are getting. Nice. The cows love it. Cows love it. distilleries in Lexington that actually produce bourbon and we visited both of them today bluegrass distillery and barrel house distillery that was a fun afternoon out now we're gonna grab some dinner and head back home it's a two-hour drive back so uh, we don't want to stay too long
all, good morning. I'm taking a little trip by myself today to the Appalachian Hills of Western Kentucky to see a very special house. I've just arrived in this town and I don't know how to pronounce it so I'm not gonna say it, I'll probably butcher it. But this is the home of bluegrass music because it's the home of Bill Monroe who is the father of bluegrass music. We're gonna go see his house in a little bit. But as I was driving up here today, it's about an hour from our campground and just coming up over into the hills, we, I could feel the truck climbing up and up and up into the Appalachians and it was so special, it's such a beautiful fall day. And um, this is the beautiful thing about RV life is that it puts you in proximity of these out of the way places that you would never otherwise visit uh, unless you were a diehard fan or something. So I'm really grateful that we can explore the country this way and see all these special places. place has been called the most musical home in America. It's not only the birthplace of three famous musicians, it's also the birthplace of the American musical form known today as bluegrass. That sign says that a lot of times the music was played out here on this porch. You can imagine a lot of banjo picking going on there and dancing out in the yard. My dad is a huge bluegrass fan, and I know that he and my mom saw Bill Monroe play in person one time. I don't know if it was here or not, but I think maybe it was. So this is a really special place for my family, um, and especially my dad. I'm swinging on Bill Monroe's porch. This area where the home place is is called Jerusalem Ridge and there they have a big bluegrass music festival here each year I think. This looks like a big stage area down here where they probably put on the festival. Back in the days of my childhood in the evening when everything was still how you said it Listen to the box out with my dad in the old Kentucky hill. I on the way back to the old home. The road winds on up the hill. But there's no light in the window. They shine long ago when I live. As I was leaving the house up there on Jerusalem Ridge, there's a house up there and the people who lived there came home and the man told me make sure you go down to Rosine Cemetery that's how you pronounce the town Rosine and see Bill's uh, grave and so here we are it's quite the monument I was left in this world all alone They do sometimes give tours of the houses, but the house wasn't open today, just the grounds. But you know what? Sometimes it's nice to be the only person at a historical site because then you can really soak in the feel of it and the history of it just by yourself. I love to do that. And I love Kentucky. There is so much rich American culture here. I just love exploring it. It's our second time here and I think I could definitely come back in the future. And you know, this fall, it's been nice to be in weather where we can um, see the colors and it's nice and cool out. And so I just love this part of the country. Now tomorrow we are heading out for another super long trip over to Oklahoma City, but we can't make it all in one day. So we're going to stop at a unique harvest host that's a pecan farm. That should be fun. So we will see you there next time. And until then, I hope you can get outside and explore outside your door. See you then. The road by torn up the hill. The